Hey everybody, getting ready to do a little bit of work here on my 20 gallon angelfish tank. We're in the process of treating it for cyanobacteria. I'm using the ChemiClean, which I use fairly regularly. I've got a few tanks that the cyanobacteria just never seems to go away. And so about twice a year, I have to get in here and do a simple treatment. It's no big deal. It's just a slightly more complicated water change, basically. So I've already done one treatment. That's what you see on the foamy water there. That's from the... Um, ChemiClean mixed with the air bubbles and it gives a little bit of that foamy appearance on the surface. So after a couple days treatment we've got the sheets on the bottom have started to break apart and shrivel up. And you can even see where a little bit of the red sign of bacteria that was on that rock right there is starting to turn a sort of rusty brown color, which shows that it's dying. So what we're going to do today is get in there with my gravel vac, and we're going to position the camera on the tripod. Not exactly sure where we're going to do that just yet. I think I might position it down at this end, and then we will get in there with the gravel vac. And I'm going to crunch and break all that stuff up and just sort of grind it into a green pulp as I vac it out of the tank. And normally when you do that, you are releasing enzymes or hormones or something. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on biologically with the uh, cyanobacteria, but when you disrupt it and break it apart like that, it sends it into breeding overdrive. And so a lot of times simply trying to mechanically clean your tank can cause it to spread even worse. But today we're gonna to do that while we are doing a treatment and anything that gets broken loose and swirled around into the tank is gonna immediately be exposed to the ChemiClean treatment. So let me get the tripod set up in a position where we can really see what's going on in the tank again. I think this is probably gonna be our best angle over here. And then I'm gonna get started on the water change. So sit tight and I'll see you in a second. All right, I think we got that lined up well enough. Now I can't see the viewfinder, so I'm going to have to assume that we can still see what's going on here. Now notice this is not the open-ended siphon that I use when I'm actually mechanically removing the cyanobacteria. Then I suck it out in sheets and I just use a vinyl tubing. Uh, that's wide open on the end that gives me a really good vigorous suction and it can just rip the stuff right out of there in sheets of course that also removes some of my substrate which I then have to sterilize and put back in the tank this is your standard gravel vac which has the wider mouth with the narrower hose and that is designed to give a reduced amount of suction at the beginning so that you don't actually suck the gravel right out of the tank and then any lighter weight material will get sucked up and carried in the water column and brought out of the tank pretty obvious by looking at it pretty self-explanatory but in this case the cyanobacteria sort of grabs a hold of the substrate and even though it in itself is fairly lightweight, it's hard to really get up and out of the tank. You can see how clumps of it keep falling back out and falling back into the water column. And that's why I'm doing this sort of grinding it around, crunching it up. I don't really like to do that with this substrate. This substrate is designed to sort of settle down and it's considered bimodal. It has fine sandy aspects to it but it also has coarse sort of um, gravelly substrate aspects to it and over time the finer sand is supposed to settle towards the bottom which gives you a better substrate for rooting into it also gives you better uh, aspects for denitrifying your aquarium and then of course the, the larger um, pieces of the substrate the more gravelly aspect of the substrate rises up to the surface area and then of course that allows for water to flow through it and allows for oxygenation and the nitrification process to occur part of your standard nitrogen cycle 
So it's a really good substrate, but it's not really designed to be crunched around like this and gravel vacked a lot. It's designed to be planted and sort of left alone. So I generally try not to do this too much, but for today I thought we would do it kind of halfway as an experiment and part of halfway as a demonstration just to have a little more discussion about the cyanobacteria. So I've said before when you are finished with gravel vacuuming and you're using one of these gravel vacs, the way to get it out of the tank is you bring it down and tip the, this end up and that way any crud and material you've got in the gravel vac stays trapped in there and you don't dump it right back out into the tank. That's why they're designed with that uh, hose on one side of the gravel vac rather than straight out the middle. It's meant to be curved around and pulled out like that. So there you go. I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to fill the tank back up, wipe the glass down. We're going to add another dose of the ChemiClean and then we'll have one final look at the tank just for the heck of it. So sit tight and I'll see you in a moment. All right. And there we are. Like I said, not a lot to talk about. Just did a simple water change. I got the glass wiped down, put the airstone back in position, and poured in some of the ChemiClean treatment. But the Farloella or twig catfish is out on the glass. So we can have a brief look at him for a moment. Definitely one of my more interesting fish. And while I'm looking at this tank and thinking about it, if you just saw those three bloodfin tetras dart by, I used to have five in here, but slowly but surely I'm losing them. Uh, I found one the other day all dried up and desiccated on the floor. So that is the price you pay for having an open top tank. Even fish that are not necessarily considered to be jumpers will occasionally jump out of the top if you've got an open top tank. So I started with five. I'm now down to three. But one of these days I'll get back to the fish store and we'll put some more little miscellaneous fish like these back in the tanks. So there you go. Three of the bloodfin tetras. Everybody else in the tank is doing fine. And we have finished our second wave of treatment on the cyanobacteria. You can still see little chunks of green. As I explained, I couldn't even get to that uh, rock back there where you can see a sheet of green over it. But the little bits and chunks are still there. I was not able to get it out completely, but by being broken up like this, you can even see it growing on the roots of the java right there. By being broken up like that, hopefully it will allow more access for the ChemiClean to come in contact with it. I don't really want to call it medication. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's an oxidizing agent but it's a very specific oxidizing agent because bleach is an oxidizing agent too. And, you know, so is hydrogen peroxide. Uh, there's a lot of things that you don't just dump in your tank that are oxidizing agents. So how it oxidizes only the cyanobacteria and the stuff you don't want in the tank, but it doesn't oxidize any of your beneficial bacteria. It doesn't bother algae and it certainly doesn't bother the fish. So again, I'm not exactly sure what it is, I'm a little reluctant to call it medication, but it is definitely the ChemiClean Aquarium Treatment, and it's good stuff. I recommend it all the time. I will put a link down below, as usual. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, this one is my 20-gallon angelfish tank, and I will see you real soon in the next one.